SUNY Cortland just did the unthinkable this weekend when they beat defending national champions North Central in the Division III national title game, aka the Stag Bowl. A team known for their high-powered offense watched as their defense came up clutch in the closing minutes to secure the national title. But how'd we get here? This is the story of the rise of SUNY Cortland, the 2023 Division III national champions. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm planning to release a video every day from now until Christmas. Also, let me know who your favorite Division III football team is in the comment section below. The State University of New York at Cortland, also known as SUNY Cortland, began playing football in 1893 and has seen guys like Kevin James play for them over the years. Entering 2000, Cortland joined the New Jersey Athletic Conference as an affiliate member for football becoming the first school to do so outside the state of New Jersey. There, they found a significant amount of conference success, finishing at least tied for first in the conference from 2005 to 2008, 2010, and 2012, and won the league outright in 2008 and 2012. From 2008 to 2012, they won at least 11 games or more under head coach Dan McNeil, but struggled in 2013 and 2014, going 6-5 and 5-5 and 5 and 5 in respective years. Going into the 2015 season, Cortland decided to leave the NJAC to join the Empire 8 Conference, which featured rival Ithaca College, St. John Fisher College, Alfred University, Utica College, Hartwick College, the College at Brockport, Buffalo State College, Frostburg State University, and Salisbury University. McNeil spoke on the move, saying, It's an exciting time for Cortland football as we embrace change. This change comes with many expressions of gratitude. First to the New Jersey Athletic Conference for their welcome and embrace many years ago, allowing us to become the first affiliate member, giving us a conference to call home, and honoring us with a storied existence for the past 14 years. We look forward to a year of goodbyes, and with this attitude of gratitude, humbled and appreciative to be a part of the great conference and tradition. Cortland finished their first season in the Empire 8 Conference with a 9-3 record, bouncing back from their past few seasons of struggle. They would find success for the most part heading into 2020, but after the 2019 season, McNeil decided to retire after 23 years as head football coach. McNeil's team posted a combined record of 155-85 and, and earned 17 postseason berths, including six NCAA tournament showings. McNeil ranked first at Cortland in both career victories and winning percentage. The Red Dragons were also 2019 Empire 8 co-champions in addition to their 2015 title. Entering the 2019 season, he coached 29 All-Americans, 90 All-East players, and 77 All-ECAC players at Cortland. Those players included two Gagliardi Trophy National Player of the Year finalists, along with the 1997 ECAC Upstate New York Player of the Year, Omar Darling, 2007 ECAC Southeast Rookie of the Year, Brian Haas, and the 2013 ECAC South Defensive Rookie of the Year. While he found a lot of success as head coach, he believed this crowning achievement was the relationship he created with his players and those outside the football program as well. Whoever was going to replace him was going to have big shoes to fill. The man chosen was Morrisville State head coach Kirk Fitzpatrick. The Red Dragons knew a lot about Fitzpatrick playing against him in both the NJAC and the Empire 8 Conference. He led Morrisville State to the NJAC Conference title in 2014, a program he had turned around from a 3-7 season in 2013 in his second year there. He put together a 34-29 record while at Morrisville State and looked to take the Red Dragons football program to the next level. Fitzpatrick was known for his high-powered offenses, averaging 31.5 points per game and 438 yards per game. Fitzpatrick's first season at Cortland would have to wait due to the 2020 season being canceled because of COVID. But the wait would be worth it for Red Dragon fans as they put together an 11-1 record and an undefeated conference record to win the Empire 8 and made it to the second round of the Division III playoffs. During the regular season, they outscored opponents 457-84 and averaged 45.7 points per game. They beat Springfield in the first round 26-21, but lost to RPI in the second round 21-14. 2022 would be another strong season for the Red Dragons as they put together a 9-2 record, won the Empire 8 again, and outscored opponents 468-157, averaging 46.8 points per game during the regular season. Unfortunately, they would close out the season with two straight losses. They lost to rival Ithaca 34-17 at Yankee Stadium and then fell on the road to Randolph-Mackin in the first round of the Division III playoffs 35-28. 
This year felt like it was going to be a special year for the Red Dragons. Fitzpatrick was going to have a roster full of mainly his guys, which meant they were supposed to play in his explosive offensive system. He built his staff around guys from Central New York who would take pride in leading SUNY Cortland to championship glory. They opened up the season with a blowout win over Delaware Valley, 42-13, and followed that up with a 62-7 road win over Lycoming. But then, early in the season, they experienced their first home loss since the second round playoff loss to RPI back in 2021. They fell to Susquehanna, 38-35, after a 14-point comeback by them in the fourth quarter. That comeback occurred with less than five minutes left in the game, as the number 22 Riverhawks hit a game-winning field goal as time expired to upset the number 10 Red Dragons. The team was shocked, and it overshadowed Zach Boy's amazing passing day, which saw him complete 11 of his 17 passes for 397 yards and a school-tying record five touchdowns. The defense struggled to stop the River Hawks' run game in the fourth quarter, and they also had a fumble on a kickoff return towards the end of the game. After their bye, they rebounded, blowing everyone out. They beat Morrisville 52-15, Utica 56-3, Alfred 59-21, St. John Fisher 42-14, Hartwick 73-7 and clinched the Empire 8 Conference title for the third year in a row with a 41-17 win over Brockport. In the Brockport game, they forced six turnovers including five interceptions, which was the most by a Red Dragons team since 2006. They put up 455 total yards of offense on a defense that was leading Division 3 in total offense, only allowing 150 yards per game and 5.4 points per game at the time. They went into their matchup against rival Ithaca with a guaranteed playoff spot but were looking for revenge after their loss in 2022. They beat Ithaca 38-28 in the 64th matchup for the Kortaka Jug and went into the playoffs with all the momentum in the world. In the first round of the Division III playoffs, they traveled to Beverly, Massachusetts to take on Etikot, holding on late to win 23-17. They took an early 14-0 lead over Grove City but found themselves down 24-17 with 8.27 left in the fourth quarter. Boys would lead Cortland on a 12-play 57-yard drive, which saw them score with a minute 23 left in the game. Rather than kicking the extra point to tie the game, they chose to go for the win and converted a crucial two-point conversion to take the lead. Yet Grove City had one last opportunity to win the game and got themselves in field goal range with six seconds left. The Wolverines would miss a game-winning field goal attempt, sending Cortland to the quarterfinals for the first time since 2008. They traveled on the road once again to take on Alma, who was coming off an upset win over number 2 seed Division 3 powerhouse Mount Union after scoring 24 points in the fourth quarter. In a back and forth game up in Michigan, Cortland would pull away in the second half scoring 24 points compared to Alma's 7 to win 58-41 to clinch the school's first ever semifinal appearance. In the semifinals of the Division 3 playoffs, Cortland would take on familiar foe Randolph Macon, the school who ended their 2022 season. This time around, they pulled off the upset win in convincing fashion over Randolph-Macon, going up 42 to nothing early in the third, and cruised to a 49-14 win to make it to the school's first ever appearance in the Division III national title game. In that game, they would be taking on Division III powerhouse and defending national champions North Central College. A back-and-forth game, Cortland would take a late lead 38-31 with 141 left. North Central responded with a two-play drive scoring with 120 left, but failed on the two-point conversion attempt. Cortland would run out the clock to secure the school's first ever national title. The second half featured 65 combined points between the teams, with the Red Dragons quarterback Zach Boys throwing five second half touchdown passes. Cortland entered the playoffs ranked number 11 in the D3Football.com national poll, but rattled off five consecutive wins, upending four consecutive previously unbeaten opponents along the way. It marked the first time a team from New York won the Division III national title since rival Ithaca did it in 1991. They also snapped North Central's 29-game win streak. After the game, Fitzpatrick told the media, it means everything. I was over there talking to the officials on the sideline, asking if we could kneel it out. We just wanted the clock to hit zero. It's just amazing. It capped off an amazing season for the Red Dragons and was an amazing game to watch. But what do you think about Cortland's Division III national title? Can they repeat next year? If not, who wins it all? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching and as always remember to embrace the grind.